Today we're going to be looking at video analysis using Pasco's Capstone software. Video analysis is a way to take video of real world phenomena or an object moving and um, bring that into software so that we can analyze and try to determine what's happening in the video. Um, there's a few different ways that Capstone can do this. Uh, we can either open a video file from, uh, let's say, a video that we recorded on our phone or camera. We can capture video using a webcam or a connected USB camera. And we can capture video with sensor data. So, you know, again, using like a webcam with, uh, let's say, a temperature sensor so that we can get data, temperature, and record the video at the same time and synchronize those, uh, those, those things. Um, today we're going to look at a pre-recorded video, so I'm going to select this first option. And uh, I have this video here, it's an MP4 that I'm going to click on and open. And right away, you'll see that we have a video on our left and a graph on the right. So let's just, let's click play on this video just to see what's happening. So we see that it's a ball being thrown in the air and uh, we're just watching it bounce. Um, now with this video, we first thing to mention is we want um, this video to be as 2D as possible so that we can have an X and a Y graph that's you know as accurate as we can get it. And the other thing is we want to be able to, to know, well, how far did the ball measure? Um, in order to do something like that, we need to be able to have some type of calibration um, in the video. And we see that in the center, we've set up this orange and white meter stick. So if I measure that meter stick and I know how big, you know, how that corresponds to with the, uh, with the video, then that gives me like a known distance. So for example, I'm using this calibration tool, placing it at the ends of this meter stick. So now I'm telling Capstone, hey, this right here is one meter long. Um, the ball you know, must have traveled three meters high. So once I have that, um, I want to rewind my video to just at the point that the ball leaves the hands. And there's two ways we can do video analysis. Um, one is we can auto track the object, which um, in this case, you know, being that it's an orange ball and a green background, um, we can actually use the auto track feature because there's that differentiation. So Capstone can follow that object as it's moving in the video. And the other way is to, to manually follow the movement, which we'll show in the second half. So if I want to enable auto tracking, I click on this feature here. And I see I have this new object that pops up in the middle of the graph. Uh, I want to go ahead and place it right on top of the ball and I want to resize it so that it's just inside the ball. So if I click start here, what it's going to do is it's going to start auto tracking that object. So it's going frame by frame and just tracking the movement. And uh, what's cool about auto tracking is that in this example, it should stop once the ball reaches the, the ground for the first time. And you can see on the right side, our graph is being drawn uh, that follows the movement of the ball. And we can already see, hey, the ball went up to just over about three meters. And now it's traveling back to the ground where it bounces and keeps going. So I'm going to go ahead and click on stop here. And uh, so now I have my data. Um, on my graph, I see that the, the two axes are showing the Y position and the X position. So we can, again, on the X position, we can see that the ball traveled around three point, you know, just a little bit above like 3.5, 3.6 meters. And that's because we did that calibration. Well, uh, let's say, you know, we, we tell our students that, hey, the acceleration, um, due to gravity can be taken, you know, we can look at the velocity in the y direction and uh, find the slope of that, and that's the acceleration due to gravity. Well, uh, we can change our axis here to vy, and we can change our x-axis to time. And here, I'm going to click on the scale auto scale button, we have a nice straight line. So we see that the velocity has been changing at a pretty consistent rate. 
Well, if we click on our uh, highlight tool here, I can highlight a region and I can get the slope. And the slope of that should be yeah, right around 9.8. So we see we've measured about you know negative 9.99, so just around 9.8 uh, meters per second square. Um, and uh, so yeah, you'll see we did that just by you know picking a few points on our video and uh, clicking the auto track. Uh, the second way we can do that is by manually tracking the item. So if I click uh, done here, let's just start this over from the beginning. So I'm going to click on new, discard. And if I click video analysis again, uh, let's open the same file. And um, I'm going to set it up just like we did last time where the axis is around there. Our meter stick is right around there. And I'm going to play the video, pause it right here. I'm going to go back just to the, the point where the ball is leaving the hands. So now this is where I can manually track the item. So um, I don't have to pick any special graph tool. This is the default option. So I'm going to just click the center of the basketball right here. And you'll see this, it placed a red cursor at the points of the ball. So I'm going to try to get this as, uh, as even as I can, but at the same time, I don't want to be here for too long. Um, so you'll see as, I, as I'm drawing these points, um, you'll see on the right side that the graph is also you know, being drawn with similar points. And uh, another thing to say here um, is we'll talk about the speed of the video. Um, we've recorded this at 30 frames a second. So that's why it's when I hit the play button, it's you know, being, uh, the video is playing at the same speed as the object actually was during when it was recorded. So let's see, I'm tracking this. I'm going to get a little bit sloppy here, just due to time. All right, I think that gives me enough points. So uh, using this, we're gonna, on our right side, we're going to set up our graph the same way we did last time, where we're going to change our axis here to a velocity in the y direction versus time. And you'll see we have this, you know, jagged point and watch it. As I, if I pick a couple more points, it should just keep adding to the graph. All right. So now if I click on auto scale and let's um, you know, highlight an area and use our graph tools to pick a linear best fit line, you'll see we have around negative 9.67. Um, so yeah, again, that's very, very close to gravity. And uh, the reason why this is you know, probably not exactly 9.8 is just due to this calibration here. So you see, as I, as I change the calibration now, it says negative 9.47, 9.88. So you know, it could be, you know, the more exact you get, the better data you'll get. But yeah, I um, mean, looking at that, we're right around 9.8 meters per second. And um, one thing I wanted to show you is I mentioned that the, well, the video playback speed, so we shot this at 30 frames a second. And I can go to the video properties here. Um, if you have a, you know, a nicer camera and you're shooting at maybe 120 frames a second or 60 or 240, um, you can change that playback rate, uh, sorry, the frame rate right here. So that capstone can adjust the video accordingly. And uh, yeah, that's a quick overview on how to use video analysis. Um, I hope you can use this feature in your classrooms. Thank you.